Number 14, professional application. Military rifles have a mechanism for reducing the recoil forces of the gun on the person firing it. An internal part recoils over a relatively large distance and is stopped by dampening mechanisms in the gun. The larger distance reduces the average force needed to stop the internal part. Letter A, calculate the recoil velocity of a one kilogram plunger that directly interacts with a 0.02 kilogram bullet fired at 600 meters per second from the gun. All right, so let's take a look at the picture over here. There's a plunger inside the gun, right? And the plunger rotates forward so as to make contact with the bullet. And then that contact with the bullet will send the bullet flying to the right, all right? And the plunger will then have a recoil velocity backwards. All right, let's just assume though that it's a, um, a straight back um, track, okay? I don't know why I couldn't find the right word there. And I didn't actually find the right word. I don't even know what that meant. Anyway, um, I think you get the idea. So basically, uh, what I have to think about here is I have to think about what's going on at the point of uh, impact between the plunger and the bullet. And um, they don't say this explicitly, but since they're asking us for the recoil velocity, uh, that means that this collision between the plunger and the bullet over here will be elastic. All right. Meaning that after the collision, they, these two objects do not stick together. All right. The bullet will go off to the right and the plunger will recoil back to the left. All right, so the main thing is, though, that we have to remember about the uh, law of conservation of momentum. All right, so we're going to assume it didn't get lost to heat or anything like that. And um, the momentum then of the, so this is for letter A, the momentum of the plunger will equal, excuse me, the momentum of the bullet. Okay, now let's expand on these terms. Okay, so the remember the momentum is simply the mass multiplied by the velocity. So the mass of the plunger multiplied by the velocity of the plunger, okay, will equal then the uh, mass of the bullet multiplied by the uh, velocity of the bullet, right? Okay, so what's the mass of the plunger? One kilogram, they told that to us in the problem. So let's plug in a one. The velocity of the plunger, that's what we're gonna look for, okay? The mass of the bullet um, was what? Mass of the bullet, where are you? There it is, 0 0.02, 0 0.02 kilograms, and then the velocity of the bullet was 600, right, meters per second. Okay, so basically what I'm plugging in here, okay, if you think about what, I'm, what, I, what values I have for the bullet, I know the velocity of the bullet, and I know the mass of the bullet, right? So this is the momentum of the bullet that was imparted to it by the plunger, okay? And therefore, this mass, and then the velocity of the plunger will be the recoil velocity of that plunger, okay? So simply, right, if we one times the velocity of the plunger is just simply the velocity of the plunger, so all we have to literally do here is take 0 0.02 times by 600, and we get a value of 12. Okay, so let's plug in 12 meters per second, and that's the recoil velocity. All right, so letter A is taken care of. Let's take a look at letter B. So if this part is stopped, okay, over a distance of 20 centimeters, what average force is, is exerted upon it by the gun? Let it be. So now um, they're telling us, right, the, the plunger after it comes back now, it's gonna be stopped by an object inside of the gun, and the stopping distance is gonna be 20 centimeters, okay? We also know that the recoil velocity, or the velocity of this, of this plunger going backwards, right, was, 12 meters per second. So therefore, this actually becomes like a kinematics problem, right? Where the initial velocity of the plunger here uh, is going to be uh, negative, right? So here we have, uh, and by the way, it should be negative also. Uh, in terms of this formula over here, I really should have plugged in, as I'm just thinking about it, I really should have plugged in a negative sign uh, for one of these uh, conditions because the momentum experienced by B will be equal but opposite in direction of the momentum experienced by the uh, P, right? Which the P was the plunger and the B was the bullet, okay? So basically this uh, velocity here should be negative, but it's not really that, uh, you know, the negative sign is just gonna tell us the sign. It shouldn't really mess up any of the math because it's all uh, basically multiplication here. So, but in any case, uh, let's just leave it as negative 12, all right? Uh, but you can frame your answer, by the way, as positive, because remember, they didn't tell us any particular direction that the plunger is hitting the bullet. I just assumed it's all moving to the right, 
here. Uh, you could have easily assumed everything going to the left, right? the bullet going to the left, and therefore you would have gotten a positive value here. So it all just depends. All right, so now back to business. So the initial velocity here of the plunger is going to be negative 12 meters per second. The final velocity, it said it was stopped, so that's zero meters per second. We also know the stopping distance, right, was going to be uh, 20.0 20, 20 centimeters. All right, convert that right away to meters. Just move the decimal place two places to the left or divide by 100, whichever you prefer. And one too many zeros there. So that's in meters. And now just be careful though, the, the displacement here actually should also be negative, right? Because if the plunger is recoiling and it's compressing something on, on the other side, it's moving to the left, right? So therefore this has to be negative. And then um, we're looking for, well, time, okay? So kind of got ahead of myself a little bit here. I can see how to solve it, but you might be saying, well, why are you looking for time? How the heck did you know that? Well, I, I knew that because I'm just thinking about this formula. I'm thinking too far ahead. And um, I realized, though, that to find the average force exerted upon it by the gun, I have to take into account the change in momentum, okay, and the force applied over the time by which it's applied. So if I divide out the time from both sides, this allows me to calculate the force. So in order to calculate the force, though, right, it says that I need to know the change in momentum and the time in which this change in momentum occurred. All right. So my question to myself is, well, I can find force if I know these two things. I can easily find the change in momentum of the uh, plunger because I know its initial velocity and its final velocity. And I also know its mass. So that's simple. Uh, the time is what I don't know. How long did it take for this velocity to go from 12, negative 12 to zero? That's what I'm looking for. All right. That's why I'm questioning, not questioning. That's why I'm setting up the question of time. So now I just got to think of a formula that contains these four variables back to kinematics. So this is going to be that the displacement is equal to one half multiplied by the final velocity plus the initial velocity all multiplied by the time. So displacement here was 0.2, right? Zero, zero. That's equal to one half multiplied by the final velocity of zero minus 12 multiplied then by the uh, time. Remember, I also said that I just almost forgot that this is going to be negative. And remember, because it's dependent upon the direction. So this is going to be one half times negative 12. And that should be a negative six. And now divide out the negative six. And notice the signs work out beautifully. That's how you know you were right, because time can't be negative. Okay, so here we have 0.2 divided by six. And it's going to be positive 0.0. .0 Zero, three, 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 three. And there we go. That's the time. Now that time is the value. Now I'm going to plug into here to help me solve. Okay. So now let's expand the, expand the change in momentum. I've done this in prior problems. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So it's the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. All then divided by the time is equal to the force. Now let me start plugging some stuff in. So the mass of the bullet was a one kilogram. The final velocity was zero minus the initial velocity, okay, which was negative 12. Great, all divided by the time of 0 0.0333, and that will equal the force. So the force here now will be equal to, let's just simply, simply calculate this. So this is going to be 12 divided by 0 0.0333. And it works out to 360, right? And I get a positive value here which does make sense, all right? And I'll explain why. So that's in terms of Newtons. And why does that make sense? Well, this plunger is recoiling at a velocity of 12 meters per second, and it's gonna take about uh, three hundredths of a second in order for it to come to rest. But if the plunger is going backwards and it's stopping, then eventually there must be some force pointing to the right, right? Right. Right. So that means that the value here, if the force is pointing to the right, that means it has to be positive. Okay, which it is. And it all worked out mathematically. So that should help make it make a little more sense. Now, let us see. Compare this to the force. Okay, compare this to the force exerted on the gun if the bullet is accelerated to its velocity in a 10 meters, uh, excuse me, 10 milliseconds. All right. So now basically, I got to do the same procedure. Right, I just now am talking about the bullet, 
Okay, so I need to use the same formulas. Let me put letter C up here on the top left. All right, so same formulas. I'm using, I'll highlight them over here. I'm using this formula. Okay, and again, I'm going to use, I'll highlight this one. These two formulas. I just got to plug in the information for the bullets now. All right. So um, actually, oh, no, it said it, ex uh, it accelerated. No, they gave me the time. I'm sorry. So no, I don't, I don't have to use, hold on, guys. I do not have to use this one. Okay, I don't need that. They told that to me already. Sorry. So all we need to know is that particular formula. All right, say so make our life a little easier. I thought it was distance for a second. And uh, this is the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity, all divided by the time will equal the force applied. Okay, so the mass, what's the mass of the bullet? They told us it was 0 0.0200, right from the problem. What's the final velocity of the bullet? Well, Compared to this, you got to read the question carefully. Compared to this force exerted on the gun, if the bullet is accelerated to its velocity, to its final velocity, what was the final velocity? 600 meters per second, okay? And it's positive because in terms of my picture, it's pointing to the right. That's minus than the initial, which we're assuming it started at rest, which is zero. And the time which it took to get to that velocity of 600 meters per second was 10 milliseconds, Convert this thing on over into seconds by moving the decimal three places to the left, or just simply divide it by 1,000. And there we go. And this is now equal to the force. So all we got to do is just plug it in, right? So let's take 0 0.02 times 600 and divide that by 0 0.01. And we get 1,200, right? So the force here is equal to 1.2. Where's the equal sign? 1.2 times 10 to the uh, third, right? Newtons. That's the answer to letter C. And that should also make sense, right? Because think about it. If the bullet started from rest and now it's moving to the right, the force exerted on the bullet to move it to the right also had to be pointing the same way, right? And that's the positive sign of the force tells us it's pointing to the right. What a beautiful problem, right? I love when all the signs worked out. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Uh, please remember to hit the subscribe button. That'd be an awesome way to... Uh, to help support us. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to leave uh, one in the comments section below. We take a look at them all the time. Thank you so very much. Take care.